flies through in my head is. <laughs> Look, it's in my face again. You got your hammers in you. I don't need mine. So we are in said generic, the blue one, hardware store. The blue We're one. We're going to have a look at the tool section. Let's see what's in store. Look what we Ooh. Right then, I'll flip this camera know. around and we'll see what we got. I love how they put dummy box. Yeah, because they know that that's an expensive Dummy thing. box. Love it. They know someone will pinch it. So before we get to the hammer section, let's have a little look at the arrangement of tools that they have got in said blue generic DIY hardware store. What we got here? We've got pad saws, scissors, snips, planes, surf forms. I mean, it is, you know, there's probably the odd bit here that would do you um, for everyday use. The majority of it is gonna be your general DIY. -er. Maybe it'd be all right for plumbers as well, because they don't need good tools. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> plumbers level. <laughs> we obviously know they don't use them. Um, you know, we've all walked in and seen a radiator like that's on the wall. So I don't think it would be a fair test if we went with something like this. This is a 16 ounce claw hammer, five English pounds. And to be honest with you, I'm not too sure that would fully drive a nail. 16 ounce, but I don't think that's the one that I've got my eye on. I mean, then you're going into the fiberglass models, 16 ounce blue fiberglass, 20 ounce. I mean, this one, this is this is for framers only. Waffle head for framers. Yeah. State of that. High velocity, this is. I'm not quite sure how high of velocity. I reckon I could throw it pretty far. <laughs> More recognized brands. So we've got 16 and a 20 ounce in the Stanley fiberglass down here and the same in the Roughneck. Now, I actually know the guys from Roughneck and they actually do make some pretty good tools. So yeah, I think our weapon of choice, Sam, if you'll agree, at 12 English pounds, and that's in dollars, you'll do a little thing there, won't you? <laughs> I think we're gonna go for a Stanley, Stanley 20 ounce claw hammer, fiberglass handle. And to make sure that it all matches up weight wise, we'll show you exactly what we've got in the Kinetic Customs a bit later in the video. So let's go and pay for this. Four inch round wire? Yeah, yeah, so we'll get some four inch round wires. I've got some six inch in the van. I've got some 90s, I've got some 65s. Same. Don't want any more than that really, do I? Security tag on, just so no one steals this 12 pound hammer. Thank you very much. Right then, let's go and try this out. Now that's commitment. I don't know what he's trying to do. I mean, they'll be that good for nothing when he gets them back. <laughs> he'll, need to, he'll need to put them in a steam room to try and straighten them out. <laughs> Any sugars or sweeteners? No, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, buddy. Cheap versus <laughs> expensive. As we've mentioned, we've got the two hammers here. We have got a 20 ounce fiberglass shafted Stanley hammer, and we have got my F16, my own personal hammer, F16 Raptor from Kinetic Customs. And we're gonna see whether a 12 pound hammer can compete on the same level or even outperform a 160 pound hammer. So we're gonna put it through some general tests. We're gonna talk about the balance, the weight, the feel, the benefits of using something like this every day. And then we're gonna test it out on some three inch, some four inch, and some six inch nails. Test how many strikes it takes to drive them fully home. And then we'll do a little speed test, Sam with one hammer against me with the other one. But first of all, to make this an even fairer test, as we mentioned, this is an F16 Raptor hammer, which means the head is 16 ounces. 
we are going to add a brass weight to this hammer to bring it up to 19.4 ounces, which gets it as close to the 20 as we can possibly make it for a fair test. So to determine the overall winner of cheap versus expensive, we're going to do three different tests. First of all, with some 65 mil ring shank nail gun nails. Sam is going to fire three of those in with each hammer and we're going to do a running strike count throughout the whole video to see which one basically uses the least amount of energy to drive all the nails home. I agree. Test number one, 65 mil ring shank nails. So phase one is going to be pretty much simple. It's going to be 65 mils, and I don't really think you're going to see a lot of difference. However, the further on we go with the video, I'm sure you'll be able to tell the comparison between the two. So I will go for, which one should we go first? Cheap. We'll go for the cheap first. Now it's the first time swinging this hammer. Head doesn't look that great. I mean, the size difference, I don't know if you can tell by on the camera, but the size difference is pretty substantial. I mean, pressure's on now and I don't want to miss. <laughs> I think to make it a fair test overall. There's three. Hold on. Any miss hits don't count? Yeah. Luckily. See, I think the second one almost drives it home. So again, that's, I would say, that's two and a little tap. That's oh, wow. three. So phase two, we've got four inch round wire. That'd Proper be interesting nails. too, so the difference between these two, man. So, so far, if all you're firing in is 50, 60 mils, don't really think you're gonna see a lot of difference. However, again, I will stress that the difference to the heads is quite substantial. And I do feel a lot more confident with this one because it just feels right in your hand. The head's a bit bigger. It does actually feel like a hammer. So these are four inch round wire nails, proper nails, and we'll see. I think we're gonna see a bit more of a difference. Yeah, you'll definitely notice the difference with these. The nails are a bit wider. Don't like that. <laughs> Do not like that. Do not like that. Don't like that at all. I mean, I lost cat. I think the overall difference is the head, 100%. The head's not much bigger than the head of the nail. Now, already you're starting to notice a huge difference. So, on the sides of these, you've got a very rounded one. So if you think the actual surface area is a lot smaller because of the rounded head. Whereas that, there's barely, I mean, you, you have got your rounded, there's barely any roundness to reduce the amount of surface. The other thing as well that big, I would say difference. is that is ground at zero degrees, where this has got a five degree grind backwards on the head, which as you're then swinging down, it straightens up. I took my thumb off. Three. So what I've done now is I've just driven two nails in so you can just see the head's proud of the timber and Sammy boy is gonna see how well the claws work at taking them out. But I think the added leverage on this one with it being a much longer handle it's going to make a huge difference. And to be honest with you, I don't know whether Sammy's got the strength in him to pull this one out with a little hammer. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Hold my beer. <laughs> this, is, this is still quite difficult with the expensive one. It's a big boy nail, but at the end of the day, if you needed to get it out with that hammer, you can. I ain't too sure that other one's coming out with that little one. I mean, we've got this quite loose as well, so I think if it was on a joist or rafter or whatever, you'd have a lot more leverage with it. I don't think we're going to get this one out, if I'm honest. Apologise for the faces in advance. <sighs> this is terrible. Nearly got it. So would it's fair to say the rounded claw in this instance actually aids the smaller hammer. Yeah. Because it be gives you a little bit more natural leverage. Yeah. 
where obviously traditionally a framing hammer has a straight claw because you can also then use it to lift your panels and your stud walls into place and use it to actually help move your timber around. I will also stress the fact that this is just actually a loose piece. Whereas if you was on joists, rafters, don't think you'd have that issue. About so it. they both passed the test. Yeah, yeah. Fair I play. Agree. Fair play. It, to be honest, I didn't think that was going to come out. So well done. These are yeah, six inches, 150 mil. Just yeah. sticking. You got oh, no I got it. Did I got you? It second time. Look. Not a bad. Hang not on. a bad shirt. Hang on. We're going to be here forever. I want to get one more. I've got work Monday, Dave. I want to get one more. It's never going to. That was a fluke. Ah, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Are you going to do three? Nah, I'll be here forever. So what, one? Yeah, one. Just one shot? Just one shot. Okay, I'll one shot as well then. Here you go. I really want to make this work as well. It's a great that effort though. Bad. It's a great effort. I can tell you put your heart into that one. I'm already nervous. Like, you don't feel confident with it in your hand, do you? Because the size of the head is so small in comparison, like. Yeah, yeah. And the added length in the handle, everything, like, nothing says this, this wants to drive nails home. Nothing. The final boss. I tell you, you, if you was doing that all day, difference. if you were doing that all day, man, you would have such bad toes elbow. Night and day, absolute night and day. At the end of the day, you know, this was designed for doing this. This wasn't. This is at best a general purpose DIY-ish hammer. Might be all right for plumbers. This is a carpenter's tool. This is a framer's tool. This is meant to drive nails. This just isn't designed for it. So, before we end this with the conclusion, we're gonna be firing in 65s, 100 mils, and 150 mils. Now, I'm gonna be using the cheap hammer, so I've had the short straw. Dave's gonna be using the expensive hammer, and we'll let you guys decide whether or not it's worth having the expensive over the cheap. You can also drop us in the comments below what you're swinging, and if there is something else you would like us to test against the winner of this. So, counter at the ready, I should be going the cheap first, and then we'll be doing the grand finale with the expensive one. We are ready? rolling, yep. Beautifully done. Oh, four hits, My baby. So there we have it. As you can see, there is quite a significant strike count difference between the expensive hammer and the cheaper version. It's no surprise to us, um, but I think that if, like us, you're a carpenter, you pay for what you get, and if you're gonna be using something all day, every day, your hammer is quite often an extension of your right hand. And I think off the back of that, if you're just a simple DIYer, I don't think you're really gonna be in a position where you're gonna be firing four, six inch nails. So this hammer is more than sufficient enough. But going back on what Dave said, if you're a carpenter or using it from a day to day basis, then absolutely you pay for what you get. If you want to pick yourself up a Kinetic Customs Raptor, check out both mine and Sam's link trees on our Instagrams where you can get a discount code to get your very own. And I think on that note, there's only one thing left to do. I'm going to send this one to the tall graveyard. Fire in the hole! Make sure you wear oil protection.